So today I am reviewing the Mistborn trilogy by Brandon Sanderson. I have been reading this trilogy for a really long time and I just finished the third book in December. I have reading vlogs for all three books but they're completely spoiler filled and so I wanted to do a non-spoilery review to kind of sum up my thoughts about the Mistborn trilogy and I'm gonna be honest they're not exactly favorable. I picked up this trilogy because I had been told over the last year by YouTubers, podcasters, random people on the street, just kidding, that uh, this trilogy was a perfect gateway from YA fantasy to adult fantasy and it's one of the greatest fantasy trilogies series ever written. Big stakes, big hype. I should have lowered my expectations so much because I, I would not call it that but that's me. Um, you're just gonna have to accept that if you're gonna watch this review. I, I didn't love it as much as everyone else did, but I definitely think there are some great things about it, and I want to talk to you guys about them today. If you have not read the Mistborn trilogy, they are consistent of books The Final Empire, The Well of Ascension, and The Hero of Ages. They center around a girl named Vin who just so happens to be a Mistborn. What is a Mistborn? In this world called The Final Empire, there is a magic system centered around metals. When you swallow a metal, you can somehow metabolize it and burn it and it gives you magic powers. Most people that have these powers are called mistings and they can only burn one metal at all. Mistborn are actually very unique, very, very special, and they can burn all the metals. Vin just happens to be one of these very unique, very special Mistborn, and when we first meet her, she doesn't know she's a Mistborn, but she's discovered by another powerful Mistborn named Kelsier, and joins a crew of people trying to overthrow the god slash ruler slash emperor of this nation called the Final Empire, and they recruit Vin to help them with their endeavor. The trilogy really goes from there, but I cannot tell you a single thing because it's all spoilery, but let's just say that it goes way beyond what I expected it to. From my experience reading YA, when I first went into the first book, I expected the first book to be the setup to kind of pull off this high slash assassination. Book two would be them attempting to pull off this assassination. And then book three would be kind of the wrap up and the aftermath of that. And I will just say that that's not how it goes. Book one does the beginning to the end of this attempt of theirs. And then book two and three follow the aftermath and then the aftermath. Um, it's really a way broader story than I was expecting and the world goes so deep and so intense. That's honestly the thing I loved the most about it, but I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let's just go ahead and jump into things that I loved. First and foremost, I was surprised every time that the story took a turn. I never knew where exactly the story was going to go. Sanderson's plot was completely unique to anything I'd read before. He went to places that I wasn't expecting, and for the most part, I enjoyed my ride getting there. The greater lore of the world was exquisite, and I think that's why most people read Sanderson is just for this crazy awesome amount of lore that he has. I have, this is the first books of Sanderson that I've ever read before. I have no idea how any of it relates to the Cosmere, but even just in this trilogy alone, my mind was continually blown with how deep everything went and where the history came from and the mythos and the way that the Mistborns and the metals and everything all work together and like the world itself and the, the deity and the religion and just all of it was very, very deep and intense. And I loved that part so much. Thirdly, just the atmosphere. Um, the final empire is kind of in a post-apocalyptic setting. There was a world ending event that happened. Um, this world survived through the work of the Lord Ruler, and now instead of a dead world where nothing can survive, you have a half-dead world where the sun is red, no plants can really grow in it, and ash falls from the sky, and it's just the most depressing setting I've ever read in my life. Everything is dark, everything is black, everything is gray, all the people are just downtrodden. That's one thing I didn't mention. Um, there's a separation between the nobles and the people that kind of rule, and the ska, which are seen as peasants and almost slave labor, but everything about this world, including the relationship between the nobles and the ska, is just very depressing and dirty and gross, and I really loved that bit of it. That's a bit where my good stuff ends, and unfortunately those favorite things of mine were not what was heavily featured in this story. The main aspects of this story are the characters and unfortunately I didn't really connect with most of the characters. I have two favorite characters from the series, Ven of course and Sazed and oh three 
Vin, Sazed, and Tensoon. If you've read the trilogy, you know who those guys are, and they're probably favorites of yours too, because they're really well done, and they're just very lovable characters. The rest of the characters, however, I either did not feel connected to, didn't really care what happened to them, or was honestly bothered by. And the main character that bothered me the most was Ellen. Ellen plays a role. I can't tell you much about his role, but I found him as a character really annoying and I felt like he was a portrayal of all of the worst things of Sanderson, the sexism and the misogyny. Um, they just, he's not meant to be a bad guy. He's meant to be a good guy, but the way he treats Ven and the way he treats the women around him and the way he views himself, I felt was very toxic, toxic masculinity, just all of it wrapped up into one. And I found him very annoying and we spent more time with him than I would have liked. Um, that's my main problem is with this trilogy in general is that the stuff I loved we didn't spend enough time with and the stuff I really disliked was where we spent most of our time. I also had huge problems with the pacing and I know Sanderson gets criticism for this a lot and I know the people that love him don't mind his pacing or in fact they enjoy it but in case you were wondering there's this thing called the Sander Lanch where the majority of the story is very very slow and kind of methodical. And then the last 200, 300 pages were just rip-roaring, action-packed, getting thrown new information as to every turn, just kind of an avalanche of stuff happening. And unfortunately, that was really jarring for me. And not only was that last bit jarring, but that first bit was boring. I was completely, not completely uninterested, but just vaguely uninterested. And it always took me a long time to get into the book. With the third book, I literally was not interested in what was happening until page 500. And I'm just going to leave that there because you should not take 500 pages to get me interested in your story. The problem, the reason why I wasn't interested was because I didn't care about the characters. And I don't know if that is Sanderson's fault or my fault. There just wasn't that connection there and so I'm not going to say that this is a bad book because of it but for me it just did not work at all. The third thing I didn't like there's a lot of things I think that's number three um, I talk about this a lot in my vlogs, but Sanderson is not a subtle writer. In fact he's often referred to as a very blunt writer for the purposes of um, getting the attention of non-readers. So people that don't read a lot, people that aren't interested in flowery po prose or beautiful writing, Sanderson is supposed to be just very straightforward, very easy to read. I felt like it was so straightforward and blunt that it was difficult to read. I felt like he was at every turn telling me what to think and making me feel stupid. He ended up not just telling us what the characters were thinking, but telling us what we should be thinking about what was happening and the characters around us. I really did not enjoy having my hand held that much and was really bothered by it and it took me out of the story so many times. I could be in a really great scene really enjoying myself and then he tells me what I should be thinking and it pulled me out every single time and I I couldn't vibe I couldn't vibe and the fourth thing that I greatly disliked was repetitive character arcs this is most evident with Vin Vin is um she's not just a misborn Vin grew up on the streets as part of thieving crews she had a very difficult past and was very kind of beaten down and downtrodden but as a misborn she kind of has this destiny or is meant to be a different person than she thought she was supposed to be and in every single book we work through the same character arc of her coming to accept who she was and who she is now and melding the two together every time. So in book one it happens and then all the work that we did in book one was gone in book two. And so then we had to rebuild that character up for her. And then oh guess what? It's the same in book three. Same in book three. She's apparently overnight, not overnight, there's like years in between each books. But in between each book she's completely forgotten everything she learned from the previous book and we have to do the same character arc every time. Not only was it annoying, too it almost felt like a commentary on women <laughs> and that because none of the other viewpoints we have are from a female perspective. Vin is the only female perspective that we see. Well, there's a couple of other minor characters that come in, but the main one, and she had to go through the same character arc every single time. It made me feel like that's what Sanderson thinks women have to do, is constantly go through the same character arc. I don't know. I shouldn't be questioning his character as a sexist, but... That's what I was getting from what he gave me. And I could be totally wrong. You could completely disagree. Feel free to, actually. Please tell me I'm wrong. Because I really, really, really wanted to love this trilogy. And I really, really, really wanted to be a Sanderson stan. But I'm not, unfortunately. So I'm going to leave it at that. 
the story that is here is well written, I would say. If you don't mind the pacing that I just mentioned, this could be the best trilogy in the world for you. If you somehow connect to the characters in a way I didn't, this could be the best trilogy in the world for you. If you're like me, I don't, I can't even tell you what it was about the characters that I couldn't connect with. I haven't delved into it that deeply, but if you're like me, this could not be the trilogy for you. And I wanted to make this review because all I ever hear about Sanderson is just gush rant rave reviews. And that could be based off of the circles I'm in, but I wanted to make this review so you guys know, one, if you didn't like the Mistborn trilogy, you're not alone. I'm here too. And two, if you're thinking about reading these books because you've heard so much great stuff about it, just take it with a grain of salt because Everyone has their own perspectives and their own ways that they interact with stories and just because everyone else loves these books doesn't mean you will too and it doesn't mean you have to. Will I continue on into the Cosmere? I am most definitely planning on reading Warbreaker next. That will happen sometime soon. Probably do a vlog for it but I don't think I could handle much more of Sanderson if this is how the rest of his books go. Um, we'll see what my experience with Warbreaker is like. I did fall in love with the universe that he was creating. So I might have to like audiobook, speed read the rest of the books. I don't even know if that's possible just to get the greater lore because I want to know what's going on and I want to know what's happening. And I'm grateful that now I'm kind of involved in this Sanderson community now that I've read a little bit of his stuff. But I don't really know what my plans with Sanderson will be after Warbreaker. So if you want to know, Make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stick around. If you just popped by to see what this review was like, thank you for stopping by. I'm so flattered that you're here. Um, I like to do reviews like this on most everything that I read. So if you enjoyed the way I talked about these books or the books that I'm talking about, also subscribe. That would be fine and fun. I try to post videos on Wednesdays and Saturdays. I'm not always great at being Marshall. I can't even tell you what happened. My dog just knocked my camera over and I was wrapping up. But Thank you guys for watching this video. Um, maybe I'll see you around later. Maybe I won't. Bye.